we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us. May we follow our hearts and make the right decisions. We thank you for looking over our people and watch out for our troops and all of our elders. And let's don't forget, Lord, those in the nursing home and all those who are lonely and need help. We are so blessed and we have so much. Sometimes we just take it for granted, but all of us here in this room are blessed people. So we thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Let us extend a helping hand out to our neighbors who need it. And all things we ask in your name. Amen. Call this meeting to order. Approval of minutes. Second. Motion and a second. <clears throat> we better do roll call. <laughs> roll call. Joe Bird. Ani. Tom Garvin. Ani. Jill Anglin. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Julia Coates. Jody Fishingcock. Meredith Fraley. Janelle Fulbright. Here. Frankie Hargis. Present. Chuck Hoskin Jr. Here. Tyna Glory Jordan. Lee Keener. Ani. Dick Lay. Here. Curtis Snell. Here. David Thornton. Present. David Walking Stick, Kara Callen Watts. Oh, honey, we did it before. <clears throat> okay. Now we'll go to approval of minutes. A motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, we'll drop down to reports. Uh, Miss Diane Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know you all are tired from your long journey back from North Carolina. I'll try not to be very long. I just want to share with you that uh, Jay Little John was kicking his heels up again because he's number one in the state on statistics with the other three job force centers. Yeah. And uh, their stats are moving and they're progressing very well. Uh, students come back July 23rd and uh, we have been meeting with the Votex to get our journeyman certificate program for plumbing, masonry, and electrical off and running for this fall. And then we also are going to be starting a machinist training program. And uh, flyers on this will be forthcoming. And then the good thing is that this Friday, I've been working with John James and the IT department with the USDA uh, uh, broadband and the $200,000 that we've obtained there. We're going to be doing a survey and a business plan to get the broadband out and about in the 14 counties. And had several meetings last week, and we're real excited about that. So our kickoff will be this Friday morning up at the Hard Rock, and you'll be getting invitations. I just couldn't get them out today quick enough because we met Friday, and it was late when we got back. So <coughs> you'll probably get an email from us regarding that. And then our OJT program, I want to commend Brenda uh, Fitzgerald and Daryl Legg. They're doing a really bang-up job of trying to get these reports in and staying on course with our uh, weekly conference calls with DOL, so I just want to com commend them and uh, Daryl because they're going to carry on the OJT program with these businesses throughout this next year, so doing a good job. <coughs> Very Any good. questions? Councillor Hoskins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Diane, on, on Job Corps, I've heard some chatter, and I think you and I talked a little offline about some of the chatter about some Indian-operated Job Corps programs being under some scrutiny, or at least that's my impression, that's not your words. Um, how do we fit into that picture? Are we in any sort of jeopardy with funding, or are we standing pretty good? I think all of the 120 Job Corps centers are under scrutiny, no matter what. Uh, for many, many years, Talk and Leagues was not in the top categories. The last several years, we've turned those things around during this last 10 years. And uh, statistically, if they uh, cut a bunch of job force centers, we could be in the running uh, to be shut down. But I don't see that happening. Uh, we had a conference call with the Department of Labor about two weeks ago, and it was with the Assistant Secretary of Labor, Jane Oates. Basically, what she did is she went in there and reassured everybody that there would be no center shut down without consultation and uh, a unified effort by the Department of Labor to go in and provide technical assistance for those centers. And apparently, from what I understand, uh, through the Dallas Regional Office, uh, the Congress and the Senate basically appropriated the money for the Job Corps Centers, and they wanted to know why DOL had to pull that money back off the contracts. That pulled all 120 Job Corps Centers a percentage of their money back because when they switched over from being under the Secretary of Labor over to ETA, they had to have that to set up positions to monitor and oversee it. 
and uh, the Congress and the Senate was not happy about it, so they all had conference calls to apologize profusely to the contractors as well as to the Senate directors two weeks ago and assured everybody that some of the people that was taking care of that budget and the money are no longer within the Department of Labor. So I don't see that happening. It, there was some talk going around before that, but after the Congress and the Senate called them up on the hill, I don't see that it's going to happen very soon. Very good, very good. One, thing, good. one thing I did want to know, Mr. Chairman, and to Diane, is that a major employer in Vanita, Cinch, uh, is uh, moving to uh, Texas, sadly enough, and taking 100 plus. I've heard 200 jobs. I don't think there were quite 200 out there uh, most recently, but I say that to note that we may have some spike in calls about uh, jobs and job training and um, and it's it's unfortunate but uh, but but in any case I want to put that on your radar screen that there's a lot of unemployed folks in Benita and the number of whom are checking I received an email this morning from <coughs> my counselor in Benita and Eddie and she had shared that information with me. Uh, I really would I could tell somebody back there a while ago I said I wish this was the employment committee because I do have a lot to tell you but I can't in this meeting or in this venue but believe it or not last week the reason I didn't go to North Carolina is because we were actually in the process of meeting with some potential businesses and those meetings did take place and uh, there's been some follow-up this morning as a result of those meetings that we held last week. I think what she's saying, Mr. Chairman, is that the 200 jobs of an eight are just going to be replaced by Cherokee Nation like well, that. We have, we have, we have. <laughs> but I appreciate, I appreciate the work, and I, I do that think good, good things are coming. So. And for, those good. for those businesses that we may not be able to get a lot of employment, hopefully they will generate some revenue that can come back into the nation for some other things as Great. well. Thank you. <laughs> Frank. And, um, earlier in one of the meetings, or one of, in one of the meetings, David Thornton had asked about a senior work program, and I know that Faye Baird has worked with seniors through a state program before. Do you know about that program, or can you get us the information on it? Yes, I'll be glad to do that. I'll be glad to do that. Yes, excuse me. Yes, Councilman Thornton. This program is a. Cherokee Nation program or is it a state program? It's a state program. It's similar, it's similar to what used to be the Green Thumb program. Green Thumb program, program chips. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like to get the information. Okay, glad to get it for you. Thank you, you Diane. Questions? Good report. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Next, uh, <coughs> Executive Director's Report, Dr. Neil Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Council Member. <coughs> you have my printed report. If there are questions, I'd be happy to attempt to answer them. Busy time. We have uh, a large number of the staff members at the uh, Salvation Army Camp at Culling uh, this week. If you have any free time at all, go by and visit those kids. It will be about, uh, about 500 kids. All in one one. <laughs> <laughs> They're having a ball. Councilman Hoskins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Morton, if we have constituents who decided late to go to college, as happens sometimes, and it, it really are what they looking at is, is maybe getting some funding in the spring. The fall's deadline is passed, but can I tell them that there may be an opportunity to apply for spring funding if they make it through the fall? Oh, for, for students who may have missed the... Yeah, uh, they may have just decided late to go to college. Decided late yeah. to go to college. And, you know, that's something that that happens. Um, I've had some students come by and visit with me and say, hey, I didn't think I would be able to go to college, but I did, in fact, get a job for this summer. And so we will open up a window for persons who did not have an opportunity to make application, which, by the way, brings me to a good spot to uh, introduce someone uh, to you. I have with me today uh, Mandy Scott. Uh, Mandy has been named uh, interim director of the College Resource Center. Mr. Greg Simmons uh, resigned last week. So Mandy is the, is the new person, the new shock absorber <laughs> for the College uh, uh, Resource Center. And in fact, uh, Mandy, uh, while we were sitting there, she brought up that topic to me. Tell me the date you had a 
had anticipated for a window for students to apply? Uh, October, the beginning of October. So this, uh, that would be for spring, but uh -huh. for those that oh, for, for fall. Well, to be awarded, we're trying to get award letters out by August 1st. Yeah, and then those students that determined that, yeah, I yeah, can go to school, actually they can start right now. Okay. Now they can't start online because that online system, you know, faded out. But if they'll get a, if they'll get notice to us that hey, here are the here are the circumstances, here are the situation, and um, we always like to to deal with that, rather than say, uh oh, you missed it. We don't want to get in that position. Thank you, right. thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> yes. I just want to compliment Dr. Morton that how he runs his program and reaches out to people instead of saying. Is what you said. Uh oh, it's too late. That you deal with every situation that comes up on a base, you know, based on each case. And I really appreciate that because that's wonderful. Because there's all kinds of extenuating circumstances that kids find themselves into. <coughs> and I'm glad that you'll work with us. We really appreciate you. And there, we try to avoid saying no. We really do. That's my wife said. I was going to say, uh, Mandy has been working with our school district in Muskogee quite a bit, and she's really hands-on, and I think she's a great pick for that position. Uh, she's really knowledgeable on the college and resource aspect, and uh, I'm glad that, that she's in that position. We have high hopes for her. She has a master's degree in organizational management. We're going to see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <coughs> Councilman Buell, hang on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Dr. Moore, you may have answered it, but when will the students that apply for the uh, for the scholarships, when will they know? By August 1. By August 1, that's the deadline. And here's another thing. Most of those we know, but if we, but some we still have to process. If we turn those out, let's say that uh, we have uh, the 1,000 that we're ready to go with, then the person that lives across the street that didn't get his or hers, or some instances, maybe they're in the same household, then hey, it shuts down our system. So we almost have to wait. It might put it this way, if they're in good standing with the university, <coughs> there's really slim chance that they would be denied. If they're a continuing student and in good standing with the university. If they're a new student and they have everything in, um, there's no reason why they shouldn't be funded. And if they're you know, admissible to college, there's really no reason why they shouldn't be funded. Yeah. And, and the closer we get to that college start date, you know, it's just a natural thing. You know, if I had a job waiting, I'd be... I'd be nervous too. But by the time we, we process so many, we get so many in, we're trying to make it a little simpler every time. One thing that held us back this year, and it's something that I don't like at all, and that is, as I mentioned, I believe, at this meeting last time, that letter of recommendation, you know, as I mentioned before, who's going to ask a person to write a letter of recommendation that's going to say, hey, I wouldn't give this kid any money? <laughs> You know, so we had a bunch over in one box, and I said, what is that? Said, well, that's one that doesn't have a uh, letter of recommendation. I said, I'll make one for them. You go ahead and find that. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to cut that out. It's not going to be in there next year. <clears throat> Council Member Lane. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Morton, you know, we were out visiting the Eastern Band, and I took a tour of the most amazing school system I think I've ever seen. Fantastic, it. And I wonder if you and the chairman might get together and have them send us that school or at least send us a... Uh, Float that thing over. <laughs> over. Yeah. Or at least send us perhaps, a, they've probably done some filming of that yeah. school, yeah. PowerPoint presentations or something. It, it just, I don't know how many educators we have on this, just this council. More well, than, we're all educators. Yeah. And but, even beyond the education aspect, think what a 
wonderful vision that gives the visitors. In other words, you saw it, and you probably based a lot of your opinion about what they're doing based on what they're doing in education, as well it should be. And uh, we are, quite frankly, uh, billing-wise, at least, we're, we're not up with it. Ed, uh, educational <coughs> program-wise, uh, I'd, uh, you know, I'd, I'd wager to match them, but the speed that they're going, if we don't really hump it, they'll overtake us. They're really accurate. Councilman Lay, we had lunch. Dr. Martin, myself, and we had that discussion. It's just hard to get that that vision of that place out of, out of one's mind when you have been there. Yeah. With, with the progress they have made. Oh yes. And, uh, it is a Look model at school. Them Ten years ago, and you wouldn't you wouldn't believe that that happened. See, the the bad thing that happens is when you prepare for the delivery of educational services, and you say, okay. That's set. Give you an example, our immersion school. Okay, that's set. Uh, the immersion school, the, what goes on inside the immersion school here is uh, more intense, more in depth than what goes on there. But we're sitting in prefab buildings and once you sit in a prefab building, you're gonna be in it until it rots down. Unless you have the vision to look forward and say, hey, we're going to get rid of those prefabs. We talked about the floor plan, the architect, the vision, the cost. We shared those ideas, and we're, it'd just be something for us to look at them down the road because we already have a waiting list at yes. Sequoia. A long waiting list. A long waiting list, so we're not meeting the needs there. A uh, lot of good things we can learn from our brothers and sisters from the East. That's right. Council One other thing that's going to happen is that as soon as this meeting's over, I'm headed for Oklahoma City. There's a meeting starting there in the morning at 8 o'clock with BIE. Not this coming year, but the following year. It may be possible for tribes to contract for oversight of federal funds that are presently going to the State Department of Education <coughs> for oversight. If that is true, and if we're ahead of the game, then that will really thrust us forward and put us into um, a real working relationship with every public school that has Cherokee involved in our area. Yeah. So it, it, it looks good, but it's something, again, we have to have a vision for, and consequently we'll have to have the resources for. But I've always found in school work, if you have a vision, Somehow or other, the resources take care of themselves. The uh, uh, the uh, school there at Cherokee has said it costs 174 million to, to build that facility, mm -hmm. and oh, uh, and I wonder. I mean, that has to be a vision of the tribe to put that money into our education system. I mean, I know. Yeah, you know we have a hospital that needs to be built and expanded because we're not meeting needs there. But uh, we have educational needs too that uh, is being made as well. It's a matter of long range, long range planning and prioritizing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Thank you very much. And I'll report to you next month on oh, okay. the uh, okay. Councilor Watts. Thank you. I had questions about Sequoia's schools because I understand there's been a significant amount of reorganization done and other personnel changes, but we've heard nothing about that formally. The reason you've heard nothing about it is that there are personnel issues involved that have not been totally dispensed with. Uh, so I uh, refrain from talking about issues where we have personnel issues still hanging. Is it a rework? Uh, I, I can tell you this, it is a reorg, it is a shift from a deanship situation. We had a dean of academics, a dean of leadership, a dean of students, and a dean of operations. There were certain shared responsibilities among the deans, so that it was difficult at times to, to say who was responsible for what. 
the school will be organized in a traditional fashion, effective uh, uh, August 8th, into a superintendent, principal, an athletic director who does not coach, uh, who deals with all matters associated with Oklahoma Secondary School Activity Association. Uh, all of the, all staff are in place, uh, all instructional staff are in place, and we're ready to open school on the 8th. Uh, some of the administrative positions are not, not yet filled. So that's basically what that is. As far as the budget situation, did not require additional funds, uh, simply a reorganization of management. Mr. Watts? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Head Start, I assume, is not here, Dr. Martin. Oh, I'm sorry. Verna asked me to explain to you that she has a staff development conference going this afternoon, and she said that everything was running fine, no problems, and would I please uh, beg your forbearance for her not being here this afternoon. Okay. Leadership, Mark Skinner. <clears throat> Leadership, Mark Skinner. I don't see Mark Skinner. Mark Skinner's last day was last Friday, so uh, I don't know what's going on with that department now. Okay. It's down to old business. <clears throat> None pending. New business. Announcement. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.